first live event of SE1X Supply Chain Fundamentals and SE3X Supply Chain Dynamics of the MicroMasters Program in Supply Chain Management. We're really happy to have you join this event. We, we really feel like it's a, a special event that is bringing together some of our credential holders and, and the course leads of, of the two courses. Uh, my name is Alexis Bateman. I'm a research scientist at MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. And on my research side, I direct our MIT Sustainable Supply Chains. And then I also contribute as a course lead to our MicroMasters program in supply chain management. We're really happy to have you today and really lucky to be co-hosting this with Ima Borrella and I'll let her introduce herself. Hello everyone, I'm Ima Borrella. I'm a research scientist at MIT CTL, at MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics and uh, I'm the course lead for SE1X. I'm also doing research around supply uh, chain management. I'm basically focused on digital transformation of supply chains and also collaborating with Alexis in sustainable supply chains. So really excited to have you all here today for this really fun live event. We're gonna be touching uh, on different topics and I'm sure many of you are mostly interested in the tips that we can give you on how to be successful in, in the MicroMasters program and in the SEX courses. So let me share with all of you the agenda for the day so you know what to expect in the next uh, 60 minutes. So, uh, we will start just talking about the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management programs, because many of you might be aware that the course you enrolled in, SE1X or SE3X, are part of this program that is a MicroMasters in a fully online MicroMasters in EDX. Um, but we want to just explain it a little bit further for people who are not so aware of it, and also to understand the, the courses that um, compose this program. After that, we, it will take us 10 minutes max. Then we will talk, we will dive into tips to succeed in our li online courses. And we have three amazing guests here who are MicroMaster holders who've been like in your shoes and will be sharing great tips on how to um, manage your time, how to use resources that are available, how to uh, work with others in order to uh, be able to succeed and complete the courses. Then we will have a little bit of time for Q&As. And finally, we will wrap up with some uh, next steps and suggestions for you. So um, during the event, we will also be uh, using some polls in order to engage with the audience and uh, also get your, some information about you, get to know you all a little bit better. So I will be launching the first one now. Um, and. Uh, in the meanwhile, Alexis, while you respond to the poll, Alexis will start to talk about the MicroMasters program in supply chain management. Great. Thank you, Emma. Uh, so yes, uh, the poll should be live, so it'll pop up on your screen. Go ahead and fill that out, and we'll close it in a minute, So just so we can learn a little bit about you. So many of you may be joining, uh, having been uh, enrolled in supply chain fundamentals and supply chain dynamics, which are two course in a series of uh, five different courses and a final exam called the MicroMasters Program in Supply Chain Management. And so we wanted to make you aware, many of you may already aware, but as you can see, there are five courses is that you know we suggest taking in order as they build upon each other beginning with analytics that is open almost all the time fundamentals to which many of you may be enrolled design dynamics and then technology and systems and together those are sort of the the broad scope of tools and fundamental learnings you will need uh, as for supply chain management. And then at the end of these, this journey of the five courses, there's a comprehensive final exam. And so we run that twice a year and one is actually upcoming uh, in May and will be run again this fall. But once you achieve all those, then you'll have the supply chain MicroMasters credential, which is essentially half a master's. And so that is a professional uh, uh, credential that you can show to demonstrate your, your awareness and knowledge and supply chain, you know, have it on your, your professional uh, CVs and LinkedIn's and, and all of that. And then, you know, it's also a pathway cr for credit for uh, master's programs. And so we have actually a few uh, uh, learners on today that will be talking about how, uh, you know, they let that led into in the master's program they are now in at MIT. And there are many different options for, for master's programs. So, so many use it as a professional credential to complement their learnings. Some roll it into an additional master's program that they're using to uh, 
to, to propel themselves in their career. So many different options, but we just wanted to make you aware that it is part of a larger program. I'm going to pop in the link for the program information into the chat right now. So if you want to learn, it gives a lot of background on each of the courses, when they're running, the course team, some testimonials. And so just take a look when you have a chance. And, you know, of course, as you're in the courses, you'll continue to hear about some of the opportunities to go on to the next courses once you've completed one and or three X. So just want to give some some of that background and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll. Uh, so then, <laughs> Emma, did you want to take this one or should I continue on? <clears throat> yeah, no, we would just, uh, as Alexis mentioned, we don't want to like dive into each one of the courses. Here you have like a general picture, an overview of what the main contents of each course are. Uh, and maybe just zooming in into SC1X and SC3X since those are our courses and, and the live event, this live event is for them specifically. So uh, I'm the course lead for SC1X. Um, SC1X focuses on really the fundamentals of supply chain management. So I always recommend it. Someone is approaching the topic of supply chain management for the first time, SC1X is the best course because it just um, teaches you about forecasting, about inventory management and transportation, which are the building blocks of any supply chain. So uh, it's an amazing course, really fun, challenging too, uh, because it has a lot of math, uh, but uh, it's attainable and like uh, people like show great results and also like uh, many, many people give us the feedback that they apply uh, right away the concepts they learn in this course to their daily jobs. Right. Yes, and, and Supply Chain Dynamics is the course that I run, and so this is really a lot about where the rubber meets the road in supply chain. So having gone through the journey of analytics, fundamentals, design, you're really learning about, you know, the global context of supply chain. So why are they so complex? What constitutes complexity in the supply chain? How do you manage complexity? What are strategies that you can employ to manage supply chains? What are the tools that you can utilize to better understand what's happening in your supply chain? And then, you know, bigger perspectives on global supply chain management. So you know, uh, trade and uh, other fundamental issues in global supply chains and, and why, uh, you know, uh, global supply chains are so critical to our, our, our supply chains that we have today. Uh, and then we, we end the course with exogenous factors, where, which are what are the other factors that are influencing, um, you know, supply chains. And obviously we saw that very, very clearly in the last year with COVID and how they can impact our supply chains. And so really understanding one, what are the potential for risks and how to be more resilient, but also, you know, uh, other exogenous factors in terms of uh, pressure to be more sustainable, uh, to be more responsible. And so, uh, you know, that course really brings the real world. And so when you, ha you have a lot of the different fundamental courses throughout the different uh, 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 the other three courses before you reach supply chain dynamics, and this one really brings the real world. And so we seek to uh, bring, you know, real world examples and events to kind of like apply the learnings uh, on the ground. So, um, and then, you know, the last course in the series would be technology and systems to which, you know, leads in once you once you complete um, SE3X. And so, um, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, maybe highlighting like one more thing. So, the um, estimated dedication per week for our courses, uh, and it is very general, right? But just to get an idea, it's between eight and 12 hours. That's reported by learners, and it's an average. Uh, some weeks will take a little bit longer, some, some weeks a little bit shorter. Also depends on your background, but just keep this in mind uh, for the, the amount of effort you will have to put in, in the courses. Um, and if you're struggling with, with maths and would like to review some uh, basic uh, concepts regarding statistics, regression, et cetera, SEC Rex is uh, a course that is always open. Uh, you can always enroll in this course and just review some of the basic anal analytics tools that are going to be useful for, for the rest of the program. Um, so with this, I think, uh, Alexis, we could go to the results of the poll. Mm -hmm. Let's Great. see. So I just uh, ended the poll and I'm sharing the results. So uh, so really exciting results actually here, which is what is your ultimate goal for enrolling in our MicroMasters courses? And by and large, 58% said I want to complete the whole MicroMasters program, micro program. Yes. 
So we are excited to lead you on that journey. And we have some folks that can talk about um, their experience in completing the whole program. Uh, and then, you know, a, a good portion of you guys, 29% plan to apply for the blended master's program. So that's also uh, very exciting. There's options at MIT. There's options around the world at our sister centers in Zaragoza uh, in Luxembourg. And so many different options to, to uh, pursue that master's pathway and, and all of which are articulated on the website that I shared before. So so if you're keen to look up on the educational pathways after completing the MicroMasters, uh, please do look uh, into that resource where we, we, where we explain that very fully. Um, any quick thoughts on that on our poll, Ima? Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And maybe just um, a shout out for the MIT Supply Chain Bootcamp. I see that uh, a few of the learners oh. are planning to apply. Uh, so if you want just to get a taste of uh, how synchronous learning uh, so if with us live is, you can also like just join us for the bootcamp and it's uh, also a great experience. Actually, like uh, Kuong also joined one of our bootcamps and uh, like many learners have just this taste of what MIT um, live teaching is like uh, before applying for the blended or for any other like longer term master's degree. So that's another possibility to just uh, in your uh, pathway and in your learning journey in supply chain management. Great. Great. Uh, so. so I think we will go ahead and we'll actually launch a second poll, but then we're going to introduce our um, our first speaker. So let me actually get our second poll. Up. I can do that if you want. OK, uh, I got it. Launch poll real time. Uh, tech right here. So we're getting it, you know, we're explaining <laughs> in the back scenes. So I'm really excited to uh, actually have one of my uh, supply chain management, I, you know, I say my, but she's, she's her own, she's her own person. I'm really fortunate to work with her as a blended student. Uh, so Kelly Sorrell, uh, she has the MicroMasters credential uh, and also is enrolled now in the supply chain management blended program and has been um, in one of the most novel years of our master's program of all time during uh, COVID and have really you know, really watch her, watch her blossom in her position and doing the research for our, our project. But she has an amazing background, is already an existing supply chain professional uh, with a de real a deep expertise before she uh, began the program. So I thought today, you know, I invited her to talk a little bit about her experience in uh, the MicroMasters and then, you know, leading into the pathway for the SEMB program. Uh, thanks for joining us, Kelly. Alexis. Um, hi everyone, um, I'm happy to speak with you today um, about this amazing program and just give you a little bit of a taste of my own experience. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in chemistry, so I moved to Massachusetts um, like 20 years ago and I've been working in the biotech and pharma industry um, for all of those years. I started out in the lab, but um, I moved into supply chain doing inventory management and then clinical supply planning for within biotech. Um, I started the MicroMasters program after someone I worked with um, talked about this amazing program. He uh, went through MIT and suggested that I look into it because I was, I mean, I was really enjoying my job in supply chain, um, but obviously I didn't have any of that formal education and he thought that I would enjoy it or that I might be able to get something out of the online classes. So I signed up um, really just wanting to learn, right? How to do my job better. <laughs> um, I didn't have big goals to complete the certificate or go to MIT. I just really wanted to, to learn, uh, but I enjoyed them <laughs> very much and learned so much. I just kept going. I took one after the other. Um, it took me about four years um, because uh, I had a lot of other things going on at the time. And I, like I said, I didn't have these big goals. I didn't have a, a timeline or anything like that. I was just taking them. Um, but then after that four years, after I finished that last one, I decided just to take the comprehensive final just for fun. And after I passed, I decided to apply to MIT just for fun. <laughs> I thought it would be fun just to have that acceptance letter to see if I could get it. But then once I had it, I was like, well, I should probably just go. Um, how could I not go? Of course I should go. And it has been 
just the best experience of my life. Uh, Kwong tells me I'm graduating in eight weeks, so I'm almost done with this long five-year um, path that started out with just taking that one first class. So uh, Alexis, I think you wanted me to talk about one key concept, right? Something that I learned in my uh, MicroMasters class that I took into into my actual work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. And also a little bit about how you managed it with your job and, and yeah. your family. That'd be great to hear about that as well. Okay, so I'll tell you, when I was doing inventory management for um, biotech manufacturing, uh, those uh, equations from the, I, I don't even know which class it was, but it was like the tr calculating transit and safety stock, EOQ, economic order quantity, right? When I kind of applied these concepts to how I replenish the just-in-time warehouse for, for the manufacturing uh, raw materials, it was the game changer. Those things are gold, right? Um, just being more thoughtful about the process and being smarter and more efficient. It was very helpful, so. That's um, a C1X, Kelly. <laughs> C1X, I'll, t I'll also tell you I took them out of order. I don't necessarily recommend that, but it's possible. Um, I, we also kind of implemented a two bin system into, into the manufacturing suites themselves. So probably the same class. <laughs> um, so as far as any tips for time management, I think my advice is for each class to stay on top of it, right? Like I think you normally get two weeks um, stay in that first week, right? Just because do things as quickly as you can. You never know when maybe a topic will be more difficult than you're expecting, or maybe your kids will be quarantined and they can't go to school anymore. So there might be things in your life or in your work or in the class themselves that kind of take the time away from you that you had been planning on. So I would first just recommend staying on top of it. Don't wait until those quizzes are due or the problem sets are due. Um, and then personally, I like to make a plan for each week, right? Um, like look at what you have to do for lectures and then what kind of practice problems you'll have to do and say, okay, uh, looks like on Tuesday afternoon, my workload isn't so bad. I'm going to watch this video. And then, oh, I don't have any more time during the day for the, this other video. So I'm going to do that after the kids go to bed on Wednesday night and Thursday night, right? Just like make a plan. And then um, honestly, each day I also make a list. I'm like a list person, right? So I make a list of all the things I've been planned to accomplish that day and I prioritize them, right? First are the urgent and important things. Second are the non-urgent and important things. Third are the urgent and unimportant things. Fourth are the non-urgent and unimportant things, honestly. And then my goal for each day is to just check them off. And if those number fours never get done, they get pushed to the next day, right? That's fine, it's fine. They're not urgent and they're not important. <laughs> um, I think that my only other comment is that I wish someone would have told me was just to take one topic at a time for these classes. Some of them are gonna be really hard for you, um, but some of them, you'll find your strength, right? You'll find it very interesting. So if you just get through the, the hard ones um, and like really enjoy those interesting ones that you're in your wheelhouse, I think the whole package itself is completely worth it. And personally, I found as time went on, I found it better. <laughs> like it, I was able to handle it better, right? If you get through that, those first couple of difficult courses, for me, everyone will find it differently, but I found um, things to be a little bit more manageable and a little bit more interesting um, the further I went. I don't know. That's my personal opinion. So. Thank you for that, Kelly. That was super helpful. I think I'd, the, the structured lists, uh, the kind mm -hmm. of getting it done when you can, the really prioritizing the most urgent. And also, I think I fully agree with her that you have two weeks, but do it as soon as possible. <laughs> do not be waiting till Wednesday at 1500 UTC. <laughs> so make sure to do it earlier. So uh, all those are great tips. Really appreciate uh, your, your insight there. Um, so uh, to that end, uh, I'm just going to pop up our poll that we just um, uh, ran. And so, you know, 
just as we were talking about with Kelly. So when do you work, when do you plan to work on the course contents? Uh, so I think we got the by and large 38% uh, whenever I can find some free time, which no plan there. That is, that makes sense. Uh, so I think that many of us, you know, are just trying to pocket it in, in free time. So that makes sense. Uh, and then a, a lot on during the weekends, early morning at night. So um, I think, you know, whatever strategy works for you is the best one. But making a strategy is probably the most important that you have a strategy on when you're tackling it, not just whenever I have time, which is which is a strategy, but you need to be structured about it. As Kelly was talking, she's going to do this after her kids go to bed on Wednesday. And so she knows when she's going to tackle it. So I think definitely being structured about how you're going to get through and, and get through some of these very time consuming lessons is a, is a really important tip because they're not insubstantial in terms of their time. So uh, yeah. Emma, did you want to introduce Ray? Sure. And just before that, just saying that research in online education just supports what Kelly just said, just setting goals and having a plan is what really makes you successful and not quitting because then life happens, right? But if you have at least a plan, then you can, uh, you're more resilient to all these impacts and things that may happen around you. And of course, doing things ahead of time, <laughs> not waiting until the night before the deadline. That's, that's key. Yes. Absolutely. Amazing insights, Kelly. And I think super important to, to remind everyone of those. Um, so thank you so much to our first guest and let's go with our second guest who is Ray Ernenwein. Ray, thank you so much for joining us. Ray is a MicroMaster holder too and um, could you give us like some talk about a little bit about your background, explain who you are and what your MicroMaster journey has been. Sure. Thank you very much, Imna. Um, my career in supply chain has actually spanned a couple of decades now, and I've had diverse experiences at large companies uh, like Walmart and Hewlett Packard, but also at smaller companies like Zenus, which is an uh, e-commerce uh, furniture company, and Jet.com, which is an um, e-commerce startup. And uh, uh, I've led teams and been on teams that have been responsible for inventory planning, network design, global logistics. So. Um, even though I had accumulated those uh, professional experiences when the MicroMasters program uh, came into my field of view, I thought it would be a great way to update and upgrade my skills. And so um, I started with SC0X, found it to be really rigorous, but really um, uh, challenging and valuable. And so I, I um, you know, worked my way through the entire uh, program and uh, passed the CFX exam in uh, 2018. So um, again, that, that coursework and that curriculum, I found to be super relevant, even though I had a lot of working experience in many different supply chain domains. And um, I would further say, uh, I was so impressed by the quality of the curriculum that I, I convinced my company uh, to partner with CTL to develop a custom version of the MicroMasters mm -hmm. course uh, and integrated into Walmart's employee educational programming. So, um, you know, the, the, the content is definitely um, recognized as being very relevant and valuable to uh, companies out there, such as uh, my former employer. Um, for me, the most, maybe the most valuable part of the, uh, of the program was, <laughs> similar to Kelly and SC1X, um, Inventory planning, inventory safety stock setting is a, is a kind of a timeless challenge for most businesses. And um, at Walmart e-commerce, we were managing literally hundreds of thousands of SKUs and the inventory levels of those SKUs in our, in our warehouse network. So we needed a, um, a mathematized yet scalable way to do that and also comprehend forecasts uh, as, a, as an input to the inventory safety stock uh, calculations. So um, ha having the working knowledge of those inventory equations and the forecasting methods as well um, helped me very much actively participate and shape how Walmart e-commerce scaled that math and put it into, into a real life operation at a, at a, at a major e-commerce company. So that, that to me was one of the great um, contributions I could make by virtue of having uh, the MicroMasters experience. That's, that's wonderful, Ray. And I think it's 
we see this like so often, right? People who have like this amazing background in supply chain management, and then still you join the MicroMaster and have like some something new to learn, uh, something that is eye-opening and that can make your job even better or your performance even better. So that's that's great to hear. If I, if I can make one more quick call, sure. um, in, in SC3X, um, uh, I believe you know there's a lot of um, exposure to global global logistics topics. Um, Inco terms, HDS codes, modes of transportation, and um, I've worked for companies that are very global, have global supply chains, and that um, familiarity with those terminologies, I think, and having knowledge of those concepts is increasingly important because we are facing, you know, tariffs and complexities in global supply chain management, and those uh, topics are increasing in um, importance. So uh, again, I wanted to also you know, call that uh, aspect of SC3X out as well. Definitely. And I think like SC1X and SC3X are very different courses, right? SC3X is much more strategic, it's much more about global implications, about the context and being aware of how that can influence your supply chain to be more resilient, to manage risk, to manage sustainability opportunities. But um, and SC1X is very much about the basics, right? Yeah. The, the main blocks that, that you have these pieces that build your supply chain, and then you have like the world in which your supply chain operates. So uh, to me, I mean, these two courses are very different, but very complementary at the same time. Great. Great. So um, Ray, what would be your tip uh, for our learners? What tips would you like to share uh, well, for these people who might be starting the journey or, or maybe halfway through the journey? Right. Um, first, I compliment Kelly for her insights, and I, and I relate to them. Um, I, too, was working um, full time while taking the SCX core sequence. And yeah, time management and being very organized is, is, is key to, um, I think, success, or it was in my case. I, I commuted uh, via public transportation. Uh, so during the week when the course materials are first released, I would actually download the videos, down the, download the, um, the resources for the course, just so I could have them on the on the hard drive of the computer and be able to access them when I wanted. And um, I used the, the commute time throughout the week to um, watch the video lectures, um, pause, replay um, when needed and uh, work through the um, quick questions and sometimes um, the practice problems. But on the weekends for me was the, was the time I would set aside to focus on um, those working through the practice problems and um, the graded assignments and um, uh, doing that in, in as much of a distraction-free environment as possible was, uh, I think, a, a key, key to my success. Um, you know, my, my advice when it comes to studying for exams is similar, just be very, very organized uh, since they're, with the exception of CFX, the, the other exams are open book. So you want to be really organized, have your key concept document, um, Readily, readily available to you, have the solutions to the practice problem, the graded assignments that you've worked um, uh, for the midterm or final uh, handy for you. And just um, be sure that you can solve those practice problems, uh, graded assignments again, because you know the exams are logically similar in, in, in nature. So again, I think organization is key, preparation. Um, and and so I think with those, with those tips, you'll be successful. That's, that's great, Ray. And maybe one question, uh, some, something to expand what Kelly and you uh, focused on, right? Would you both talk about how to manage time effectively? Because of course, you have a life, you have kids, you have a job, and also you're taking these courses that are like, uh, pretty intense. Um, did you have someone to keep you accountable? You know, like your husband, a colleague, a friend? Um, Honestly, I... I want to, um, you know, honor honor my spouse and my family because I actually deprioritize them on the weekend <laughs> for uh, well almost two years while I was going through the uh, courses. You know, to me, it's it's it was holding myself accountable. Um, I I um, you know the tracker in the edX dashboard is you can see each week um, did you complete what did you, how did you score? So to me, I'm self motivated and competitive perhaps in a way, but um, um, I think maybe another tip would be to negotiate with uh, the other key people in your life and say, 
um, I want to make this commitment. I hope you understand um, how I want to prioritize that. Will you support me? And um, I think if you have all those things in alignment, uh, there's a good chance things will work out. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for your candid response because I, we've heard that from other people too. How how hard it is to find that balance and how um, the, the support from their spouse is so important uh, to make this work. So great. Um, thank you so much, Ray. Thanks for your tips. Thanks for your insights and for sharing your journey. Uh, really, really interesting to hear uh, how Kelly and you manage the time. Um, so, and hopefully our, our learners, the ones that are listening, um, can apply some of your insights uh, to their journey. So what we're gonna do now is launch a third poll, uh, just to, great, just to um, ask you how to use, uh, will you, or do you plan to use the forums to support your learning? And uh, let's go with our third guest while we yes. co collect responses. Great, yes, yeah, so we've had great input from Kelly and Ray and we, we've invited a, a third credential holder, Kwang Bowie, who's also a, a, a semi-celebrity in our community teaching assistant uh, community and so uh, has also a, a depth of expertise in supply chain. So I'd love Kwang, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and, and about your journey in the MicroMasters program. Okay, hey. uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Alexis, uh, Ima, and also MIT for giving me this opportunity to share about my experience with the rest of the learners. Okay, my name is Kwang Boy. I'm from Canada, but I've been living and working in China for the last 20 years, okay? My role right now is I'm essentially a uh, supply chain consultant in the water treatment industry, mainly for the home appliances for the USA market, okay? My responsibility essentially are two. One is in the SRM, which is the supplier, relationship management, whereby I will source but, uh, and so procure a lot of these new products, water-related products from, uh, from China, especially in China. And then right now, because of all this global trade happening between the friction between China and, and the US, we are actually looking into uh, Southeast Asia countries. Okay, that's one of my main focus. The other focus is into uh, new product development work especially in project management. Oh, so I'm very hands-on. I work a lot of my time with the R&D engineers to design, to influence them, to select components, to, to build machines or water dispensers, uh, water filtration products, water softening products, and water purification products. Again, all these are all home applications for the USA market. I travel extensively in China Last year, I think uh, just alone, uh, I think I spent roughly around 120 nights uh, uh, at the Merritt Hotel. That's excluding uh, hotels in, the, in uh, the rest of like Chinese hotel here and there. So I think this year I'm gonna hit maybe around 200, 200 night, uh, nights. So this is common for me. So hopefully when the COVID is under control, so this will also give me a lot of opportunity to travel across uh, not only just uh, Asia, but also back to the US where the headquarters is located over there. So um, another thing is that uh, regards to the uh, micro master's credential, I started my learning journey in uh, September 2017. And I received my micro ma master's credential in the uh, end of uh, September 2019. So uh, that's, that's part of my journey. But I, I think, uh, with this limited amount of time, I like to focus on how to uh, do well in your greater assignments. So I have seven steps here. So I'm gonna be very regimental, systematically explain to you step-by-step step how you do it. So step one, okay, good time management. This is very, very important and it's repeated by Ray and also by Kelly, okay? Because most of us are full-time professional and we have family commitments. So if you are, uh, are really in sincere about doing this, make sure that you reserve blocks of time for you to commit to this thing. So step two, okay, commitment is one thing, but then you must have good discipline, okay? When you say that you want to do it, make sure that you do it, okay? Don't just say it and then forget it, okay? So what happened was that during the commitment part of it, right, for myself, 
uh, usually I'll spend at least one hour a day, Monday to Friday, to go through the materials. Then weekends are very, very important to me. Okay, on Saturdays and Sundays, I will usually spend maybe around six hours to eight hours. But one of my worst course right now was when I took SC2X optimization. On weekends, I was spending roughly around maybe 12 hours to 15 hours a day. So that, that was very, very demanding, that, that course. Okay. Then step number three is that every Thursday morning in China, when MIT released the, or no, EDX released the course material, I would download all this material, okay? Uh, course material, lesson one, lesson two, and of course your graded assignments, okay? So I'll print out a copy for the course material, right? lesson ones and lesson two, and also of course the, the graded assignments. So the step number four, which is very, very important, okay? How do I study? How do I make sure that I, I do well with my graded assignments, okay? I go straight to the graded assignments without doing anything, okay? Just go straight to the graded assignments, read, study the graded assignment and remember the questions, okay? Then you go back, okay, to begin uh, uh, watching the videos. So when you start watching the videos, you remember, okay, at your back of your mind that, okay, what are the questions that's been asked? So this way will speed up your learning process. And also at the same time, you start writing down notes, okay? Make sure that you know what, what is gonna happen and how you're gonna tackle the questions. Step number five, sometimes you may encounter very difficult concepts in your video. So what I do is that I skip, I continue to just skip. And then after that, once I finish at the end of it, I'll go back again, okay? And then step number six, uh, once I'm done with the videos, then I'll start, of course, I'm gonna attack the QQs, okay? The quick questions, the, the PPs, and then the final one is the greater assignments, okay? My objective is that, right, when materials usually are released on Thursday morning, right? I will try my best uh, to complete and submit the, the greater assignments uh, on Sunday evening, the same week the material is being released. Therefore, you, you will have a lot of time uh, the next week that uh, you have before you wait for the, the, the next series of material that's going to be released. You have Monday to Wednesday to go back again to your previous material. So this is how I, 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 I do for my uh, greater assignments. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Kwong. So uh, I think that was some great tips on, on how he is very strategic in, in tackling the graded assignments. So certainly one strategy. Uh, but of course, you know, the other strategy would be to watch everything in full uh, and then get to the end. So, you know, whatever makes it work is what is the most important strategy. Uh, but we wanted to ask, so, you know, uh, you are one of our... Um, so Alex, Alex, is just to complement that. Um, yeah, maybe saying, uh, re-emphasize that in the exam, you can like find questions about any of the contents. So just uh, be careful. I mean, if you, if you follow Kwon's strategy, don't study only the questions that are in the grading assignment. Just you need to like learn everything that is in the lessons. We recommend you to do the practice problems too, because you might encounter something in the midterm exam or the final exam or the CFX that is actually not a question in the GAs, in the grading assignment. So um, yeah. Just be aware that you need to know all the contents. Yep. Yep. Good point. Good point. Um, uh, so I think that, <clears throat> you know, make sure you cut the full material is testable on the exam. So I think keeping that in, in your um, perspective and making sure you cover all the videos and practice problems is really important. Uh, great. Uh, so Kwong, as, as one of our esteemed uh, community teaching assistants, um, you know, you're really uh, engaged with a lot of the students in, in the discussion forums. I wonder if you could talk really briefly about um, the value of the, the of engaging in the discussion forums and perhaps that how that can help their their learning journey given that you know you you use it a lot and, and you're a very active CTA in supporting learning journeys in there. Okay one important thing about this uh, MOOC or online learning experience is that it's actually a one-to-one -one. you are always constantly facing the computer screen okay so you the computer screen is actually your best friend Okay. And how is it going to be a best friend is through the discussion forum. Okay. So during my learning process, whenever I don't know anything, uh, or I, I, some of the concept could be very difficult, I'll start, I just sim simply fire a question in the discussion forum. And hopefully somebody will pick it up and are able to 
uh, provide some uh, some answers to me. So, so but then sometimes uh, when you get into very complex problems itself, uh, of course you you mean you know, of for example optimization itself. So so how how are you going to be able to solve these questions? So one of the ways that not only do you use your discussion forum, but at the same time I write emails back to the uh, the teaching staff itself. Okay, this is one way of doing it. So of course you have to, uh, another another way is that I do have a, a study partner with me, but of course you have to be also very sensitive with regards to the code of conduct, okay? So this is about integrity and honesty wise. So it's good to have a buddy buddy system, but then and anyway, going back again, you have to be very careful with this. Great, that was uh, very helpful. And I think, you know, exactly right. He's, he, I thought his example of one discussion forum is a great resource. Many questions are, many students are asking the same questions you have, so check it. It may have already been answered. And our amazing CTAs such as Kwong and a huge team of CTAs we have in each course that are volunteering their time to answer your questions may already be answered. So please check there first. You know, of course the course team is always a resource to you, but so many of the answers are, are even fuller and more engaging in discussion form. So we highly encourage you to go in there. I think Kwong's suggestion of having a buddy is excellent to keep you honest, to keep you through the week, week but of course parsing out the assessments that you need to do independently so you can have a study partner to you know check and make sure you're keeping on some of the due dates and learning and questions and everything uh, but of course uh, make sure that you do your assessments independently because we are very serious about that so um, that is a, a key you know uh, element of the program that you need to get through those independently but of course all the tips you can tool to help you get through the course uh, are important so thank you kwang for for sharing the journey and for those that are uh in in the courses right now you'll likely see him active in the discussion forums he's always answering questions along with the other great team of ctas we have for each of the courses uh so just uh he, he won't be the last of when you see some of these folks uh so emma just shared the uh, poll results so how do you use the forms to support your learning. Uh, so it says about 30% check them very often, but I never contribute. I suggest you change that. So what you've learned here today is one, yeah, definitely check them. By, that's very important, but um, contributing makes it even more engaging. So clarifying questions or posing your own. Um, and then uh, of course, uh, asking some, uh, so the next portion is that they've uh, asked some questions expecting CTAs or course teams to answer. Yeah, maybe just highlighting here, Alexis, that a great way uh, of improving your understanding is also trying to answer other students' questions. So um, just posting a question and waiting for, for a CTA or a course staff to respond. I mean, that's great. And we're going to respond. But uh, just trying to help other learners, just contributing to the forums in different ways, it's, it's also a great way of deepen, deepening your understanding on the topics. And that's what all our CTAs mentioned. And actually, Kwon and Ray are current CTAs for, for SE1X. Um, and, they, and many others say that once they try to answer or to clarify the questions of other students, it's just a great way of like really becoming a but I'm an expert in the topic. Um, so that's just a suggestion that you can use the forums also to, to help your peers. Yep, that was, I think that's really important. So discussion forum among the many tools you have available. So um, we have a lot of questions, but we also recognize we're a little bit over our time. So I think what we'll, we'll answer a handful of them and, and, uh, and uh, get through a few. Um, and of course, you know that you can check many of the questions I see here are things that are already answered on our website. So if we don't get to it today, please make sure to reach out, go to the MicroMasters website. Um, you know, we also have our, our um, um, staff uh, email, uh, the, the MicroMasters email to which uh, Bedre, one of our colleagues who's online, um, uh, answers very quickly too. So um, if we don't get anything uh, through um, uh, it today, just make sure that you, you can find it. So uh, let's see. So uh, we'll start with um, Pranav's question. So is there any compulsion of having mandatory work experience before applying to the blended program? Well, I'll say quickly, yes, it's preferable that you have work experience because we, we tend to bring uh, experts uh, at, or excuse me, not experts, students that have some work experience about two years uh, between both our residential and blended program. But uh, maybe I'll just turn it to Kelly briefly and see, Kelly, how did having work experience already help you on, upon joining the blended program? 
Um, it was, it was invaluable. I mean, I had, you know, 20 years under me and it, like, I feel like, I don't know how to explain, um, the, the way that we do supply chain in the real world, right? It's, it's a little bit less black and white than what you might get in your MicroMasters course, right? And so I just feel like that combination of like real world experience and the actual, um, classes and the recommendations and the equations and stuff like that. I think that, that what was just super important. And so I, 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 I agree like that. And, and then, the, and then, and when you're at, at the class with all these people, with all these amazing ex different experiences in you, it only really increases like the, what you can get out of the program. So that's all feeling. That's helpful. Yeah. And I do like your framing of it. It's the real world is not necessarily as black and white as some of the uh, lessons you get, Todd. So um, it's good to kind of keep that all in perspective. So just uh, to reiterate, Pranav, it is uh, helpful to have um, several years and in, in, in the selection committee does look for a little bit of experience before you enter the program, because it really helps your um, experience in, in, in the value you take out of the program. All right, Emma, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, we have a question here by Tomoko Harita um, saying that uh, haven't taken SC, she or he, I don't know, hasn't taken SC1X and SC2X, but um, they would like to uh, take SC3X and they wonder if it would be manageable before taking SC1X and SC2X. So I would say uh, Kelly is an expert in taking the courses in a <laughs> different order. And many people take the courses in a different order. You know, some people just feel like more drawn into uh, learning about supply chain strategy and uh, these topics that are covered in SC3X. Starting there, if that's uh, what your passion lays, then do that. And then you can always go and take SC1X and SC2X and the more quantitative courses later. Uh, if you think that the MicroMasters program style is something that is a good fit for you. So I, I don't know, Alex, if you're a, uh, maybe you want to complement that uh, because you're the course lead for SC3X, but I don't see um, as a necessary step taking SC1X or SC2X before SC3X. And we recommend the order, but it's, it's not mandatory. Yes, I mean, only to, to echo exactly what Eamon said, which is it's it's recommended just because the lessons do build upon each other. So if you can do that, great, but it's not, the courses are set up so that you can take them out of order. And in some cases you can take two at a time, which I know many uh, end up doing. So uh, it, it, it's pretty flexible in that way. Uh, we have a recommended set, but really we are, we're, we're cheering you on and we're hoping for your success and we've designed the, por the program accordingly. So we, we really want you all to succeed. So um, just, just to keep in mind that. Uh, just to, I have one uh, quick uh, erase ask, can you pro provide a link to the discussion forum? Below every single lesson, just scroll down to the bottom. We have discussion forum links at every single relevant lesson. So you'll just scroll down there. If there's a question, it'll show up. And uh, you know, if there's an answer, pop, it'll pop up. Or you pose your own. Of course, you can also go to the top header of your of your dashboard, and there will be a link that goes to the discussion forum there. And you can actually search for things. But just it's basically everywhere you look. So just make sure to scroll and look down. And, and the more you use it, the better you'll become savvy with finding what you're looking for. Uh, so we just wanted to throw that in there. Um, Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I have one question here. It's about how can they apply to become a community teaching assistant, a part of the of the CTA team. We send out an email uh, towards the end of each course, just um, with a link to apply to become a, a community teaching assistant for our courses. We're always looking for new contributors to uh, be part of our teams. And uh, we have these amazing teams of uh, 13, 14 people in each run, just uh, passionate learners who are very experienced in supply chain management and are like really willing to give back, back to the community and, and help uh, all of you to uh, go through the courses in a, um, just learning as much as you can and uh, answering your questions. So um, just uh, keep an eye out for that email towards the end of the course. And, uh, so you, and or you can send an email now to sc1xhelp at mit.edu or sc3xhelp at mit.edu and just um, say that you're interested. Uh, we will take your candidate candidature candidacy into account. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
good good answer for there. So let me just we'll just ask two more questions and then we're going to sign off for today because I know our guests have to get on to their day. Um, they're very busy people. And we're fortunate to have their time. So uh, Maria Cruz asks, are there recovery activities available in case we get a bad grade in a GA? So good question. Um, and so I actually ask uh, Kwong, uh, you know, in, in the case that you got one bad grade, how do you recover from that? Uh, and, and how do you keep kind of keep motivated if you didn't do real poorly on if you did poorly on one GA? Oh, do this, this a is a good question. Very, very good question. You know what? You just have to soldier on. OK, so what happened was that don't get discouraged by just one greater assignment. I think it's only 2.5 marks only or 2.5 percent only. So just just move on. More important, focus on uh, uh, try to get over your, your GAs, then focus on your midterm, your final exam. Those are very high weightage. And um, one question for, for Ray. Um, what are good strategies regarding knowledge retention? So I guess people are worried that they're taking these courses maybe throughout two years, then they have to take the CFX. How do they make sure that they actually like remember what they learned in the first course two years ago? Yeah, you know, I think it, it pays to be really organized when you're going through the courses. Um, keep your homework assignments, keep those lecture files, slides, and so forth um, at your fingertips. And I go back and refer to, um, you know, the, the spreadsheets, the slides, and even sometimes the videos um, when I'm working on a particular topic at work. Um, so I think the more that you can translate um, some of the MIT MicroMasters concepts to your to your work um, problems. The the more you you know retain the the knowledge that you accumulated in the courses. So I think key to knowledge retention is um, just putting those concepts into the practical use on the job. So look for ways to do that. Even if it's not yourself, you can you know um, advise other other teams uh, sometimes and. Uh, uh, draw upon that uh, that great uh, reservoir of knowledge that's in that huge um, collection of courses. Thank you, Ray. Great point. Yeah, that was really helpful. And I ever the input from all three of our panelists was uh, super helpful today. Really appreciate their time. And of course, you got the mega semi book key concept document. So you know, you just put that somewhere, carry it around with you, make sure you're, <laughs> you check it all the time as sort of a retention. We, you know, over time, we've added to that document. Of course, it's not everything, but at least uh, some ref refresher as you go along. Um, but let I uh, just wanted, again, reiterate our thanks to Kelly, to Ray, to Kwong for your time and your input today. We, we, you know, on the other side of the course lead, we respect all of our credential learners for their capability to manage your time and get through this very challenging program. But as you see on the other side it's worth the journey it's worth the community you develop it's worth the learnings um, really appreciate all of you joining for the event uh, we will have this uh, go up on our YouTube channel so if you want to refer back to it or, or you know want to um, get some key insights again from from any of our panelists you can come back and watch it but I just want to wish you all the best of luck in your in your courses and um, we'll we'll be along with you for the journey um, yes and maybe so let me reiterate, just thank you so much to our guests. I think it's been great. And it's always great for our learners to connect with someone who has been through that. And they are just at the end of it and uh, are happy about the journey, right? Because sometimes it can be tough. Um, so let me, oh, not that. let me share um, one last uh, slide just for wrapping up. Uh, we will have two amazing live events, uh, one in May, one in June. Um, we will have we will be having like fireside chat discussions with uh, Mark Baker and Wendy Herrick, who are uh, both of them are VPs at uh, at big companies in the U.S. Hewlett Packard and also uh, Unilever. So I think these are going to be very insightful, insightful and fun conversations. And we will see how the topics that you are learning in our courses uh, can be applied in uh, in the real supply chains, as our guests today were mentioning, that at the end is the one of the key um, outcomes of taking these these courses. And just wanted to mention that um, if 
you want to complete the MicroMasters program, as many of you seem to, uh, seems, that seems to be your objective as uh, per the first poll that we, that we shared, uh, then remember that you need to get verified and the deadline for verification is coming soon. So just don't miss the deadline because then we always receive emails like, oh, I miss the deadline, I cannot verify. And then you have to wait until the next run of the course. So just remember that if you want to have access to grade the assignment and exams and get the certificate and also access to supplement materials, you need to verify before, before the deadline um, that is uh, published in, in both courses. Um, and I think that's it. Just wanted to uh, share that reminder and just um, and a little uh, peek into our next live events. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Ima. Definitely glad that you brought the, the our future events. So please join us for those and, and continue to add to your knowledge of supply chain management. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you, Kwong. And everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.